Hey everybody, Patty Ann here. Welcome to my studio. I hope you have a cup of coffee or a cup of tea or even an adult beverage depending on what time of day you're watching. But What I'm going to make today is a placemat. It's going to be for Valentine's Day. And on that placemat, I'm going to put a bud vase with a rose in it. So, and it's going to be double-sided. Um, if you look behind me, you can see where I got this bud vase or this um, placemat. Here it is right here. It's on sale right now. I think you can get this freebie right here if you want to test it. But it is on sale right now. Instead of it being $20, it's $15. And it can be made in a 5 by 7 hoop. So I have already gone ahead and cut out the fabrics pretty much that I need. You need seven pieces of batting that are five by seven. You need seven pieces of a more of a solid color, five by seven. Seven of this, any any colors you want. I'm just using red for the Valentine theme. And then you'll need pieces of this, seven also that are four by four. I'm using plain white, well actually a textured or a white on white pattern. And you need to cut these four by four. So let's get started on making this really pretty thing. Okay, the first thing I'm going to show you how to do is to wind a bobbin so that it matches the upper thread. I'm using this great big spool of sulky thread. I'll have it linked for you down below. This happens to be a rayon thread, and I was using this for my Christmas things or my... Um, freestanding lace so I could take my little burning tool and burn right up to the edge because this thread won't burn but the stuff around the thread will so it really makes it handy and maybe you've seen me do that in other um, tutorials so what I'm gonna do and I also like to use a thread stand like this so I'm going to go ahead and put my red thread on this stand and hopefully you can see it. If not, I'll take a picture and go like that. And then to use this machine, it shows you right here what to do. So the first thing you're going to do with your bobbin thread is go down where number one is and then up at number two. And then you'll come around number three and in front of this little thing that looks like a wheel to me, in front of that. And that provides your tension. And then you're going to go ahead and wrap this around here about six or seven times. Six or seven times like that. And then you're going to use the little cutter that's on the side of this to cut. And make sure you don't leave your end too short because then it makes it hard. And I'm not left-handed. so. All right. So once that's done, I did need to turn on my machine like this because I hadn't started it yet. And now once I push this over to my embroidery area, it's going to change this color of this button to an orangey color, which lets me know it's going to load the bobbin. So I'm going to start doing that. And I think I'll load three bobbins. I've already done one. Hopefully that will be enough. There's the first one. And actually, that was one I had wound before, so it's almost, it's like halfway wound. Now on my other machine, my Quattro or some of the other models of the Brother machines, it stops automatically when it's done winding the bobbin, but this one doesn't. This is the 1700E, and so I can tell by the sound of it that it's getting full. You can hear it right now, it sounds different, so I click this to stop it. Then I can just use this thing again to cut. Oopsie. There we go. To cut this. And again, I'm not left-handed, so I'm having trouble trying to keep my big old hand out of your way. So there's a second one done. So with this still threaded like this, I can get another bobbin. And I like to keep my bobbins in one of these little rings like this. It's really handy. So I can actually put these in here for safekeeping and start another bobbin. So again, I'll wind this around here about six times or something, then cut it with a little cutter and move this over like this and say go. OK, 
Okay, now the directions also say to use um, cutaway stabilizer, so I'm going to get that out and I'll meet you back here. Okay, the directions say to use the cutaway stabilizer, so I have two types of stabilizer here. This one is a medium cutaway, and I know that because there was a label on it, but also if I try to tear this, I cannot tear it. That is cutaway stabilizer. That's what I'm supposed to use. This, on the other hand, is tearaway stabilizer. And see how easily I can tear that away. So you don't want to use tearaway for this project. You want to use cutaway. So I'm going to cut a piece that is larger than my hoop. And as I said, I'm using the 5 by 7 hoop. So I'll cut it right about there. And I'll place this in my on my hoop like this. Find the part that has the little triangle at the top of the hoop. Usually a lot of times what I like to do with mine is to mark it so I don't have to look really closely for that top part. So I just put a little red or pink dot on it of a permanent marker, a Sharpie. And then I know that's the top really quickly. And I'll just go ahead and put this in here. And then I'm going to put this into my machine. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is, since this is the 1700E, which means I can send designs wirelessly to my machine. I don't have to use my USB drive to move things. I can still do that, but I don't have to. And some people have a little trouble with that. So I'm going to show you up at my computer how I go about moving the designs from my computer to my machine without using a USB drive. Okay, when I got my brother machine, I got, I think it was two pieces of software, the BES, and then this down here. If you look down here in the trough of my computer, this one right here, if I hover over it, it says Brother Design Database Transfer. I'm not sure if it automatically put it in this trough or if I dragged it down here, but that's what you'll want to look for, the Brother Design Database Transfer. I'm going to open that up. Okay, once that's open up, it looks like this. And I am going to go to my Downloads folder, and I'm going to look for the folder that begins with M-L-E, because I know that's where it is. M-L-E, here it is. So these are the ones that I want to use right now. Um, and so I know exactly which one I want to use right now. I want to use the start panel, which is this one right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to highlight this one. And notice to see these pictures, originally it looked like this when I opened it up. I simply right clicked over here and said large thumbnails. And I was able to see them. So I'm going to take this one and when I highlight it, notice this arrow right here. I'm going to add to my writing list. So here it is right here and it's ready to go to my machine. Now, if your machine doesn't show up right here, you might have to go through, it'll you know, ask you to go through a little procedure and it's very easy. But since mine already shows up and I've put it down here to where it's waiting, all I have to do is click on the sewing machine and notice it says right here, it's transferring it. Then it says it's done transferring it. So then if we go over to my machine, I'll show you where it is. Okay, to find the design that I just transferred over here wirelessly, I'm going to click on this little pocket right here. Once I've clicked on the pocket, I'll click on this one that looks like a Wi-Fi. And there are two images, I've actually already done two, that I'm going to uh, use. So, all I have to do is click on the one that I want and click on Set and edit and begin stitching. Okay, after hitting embroidery, it's going to take me to step number one, and that's going to be the placement stitch 
for my solid or solid-ish red fabric. Here's the first one that I've already done so you can see what I'm um, going for. I've got the solid-ish as the outside. I have white on the inside and then I just used red um, thread for everything and on the back you can see is the other color of fabric for the opposite side so that it will eventually be two-sided. While this is stitching, I'm going to go ahead and cut this cutaway away from this. So I'm going to do the placement stitch first. Okay, the placement stitch has finished, so that tells me where I'm supposed to put the piece of batting on top of this. And then, and what I like to do is I like to go ahead and hold this up to the light so I can make sure that I have it all covered perfectly. So I have my piece of batting, and I'll also put my piece of fabric. And again, Kind of hold it up to the light so I can make sure that I have it out wide enough. Okay, that looks pretty good. Yeah. So then I will stitch those together and continue cutting this. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use my burn tool to go around this. If you don't have the burn tool, if you have a soldering iron or someone in your home has a soldering iron, you can use that. I've seen people even use a lighter to light this. Now, you won't want to do that unless you've used rayon thread because if you burn polyester thread, it's just going to melt. Rayon thread will not. So that finished step number two. Now it's going to do step number three, which is going to put the zigzag around this heart. This is the tool I use. There are many different ones on the market. Okay, at this point now, I can go ahead and trim around this heart. So take this out. I'm not going to take it out of the hoop. I'm just going to use my little clippers and trim around the heart. And then after this, it's going to be time for me to put my placement stitch for my center heart. And now I know where to put this. And then the zigzag for the heart. Then I'll take this out and trim the heart, the extra fabric away. Okay, that's trimmed up well. And I'll stick this back in and it'll do the satin stitch around this heart.
and in the meantime I'm going to use my heat tool on this hopefully you'll be able to see what it does It's at this point now that I take this out and turn this over, trim off some threads if I want to, and then put the backing piece on here, which is this. But before I do so it'll stay in place, I'll use a little bit of this uh, repositional, repositionable adhesive. Spray it down here and place this on here. So it covers the whole thing perfectly. And then just place this back in. Make sure that it's here and here and there that it hasn't gotten buckled up under there. And do the placement stitch. Also do the basting stitch. Okay, here's something that's totally different on this middle panel compared to the start panel. On the middle panel, after you do the zigzag and you have this back here and you've trimmed around it, you're going to be on the coneflower blue of course you make it any color you want but step number 10 of 11 and it's at this point that you're going to stick this back in here and you're going to bring up the one that you've been working on before so I've already put two pieces together I'm going to bring this piece right up here so it matches perfectly like that now they recommend that you use uh, pins I'm just using some more of my repositionable adhesive because I seem to think that that worked well on my first set. So I'm going to butt those right up against each other like that and kind of hold it in place and stitch. So that's just a basting stitch. So when that's done, I'm going to take it out of my hoop for a sec and look and see, do I like how that matched up on both the front and the back? And it looks perfect. So I'm going to continue on and do the whole stitching all the way around my guy. And that's going to take another seven minutes, so I'll meet you back here. And by the way, I have another tip for you that I'm hoping is going to be a really good tip. Rather than using cutaway, I'm using no-show mesh because I think that that is going to melt away a lot easier than the cutaway when I go around these edges to fix them. So meet me back here and let's check out my tip and see whether it's a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Okay, that has finished stitching and I'm going to take this out of the hoop. I have one other, another tip to tell you about and I know this because mine got messed up. Luckily I was able to save it. But when it's doing the satin stitch or even the zigzag stitch and coming along here, your foot could get caught up in here and really mess things up. So when it's happening like that, either have a pair of scissors or a pencil or something 
that you can hold this down to make sure that your foot doesn't get caught. And I'll show you a little bit better. So your foot doesn't get caught under here and make a mess. So now I'm gonna take this one out of the hoop and let's see if I'm right, if my tip about using the um, no-show mesh is a good tip. So let me cut this away. I think it's going to be a good tip. I hope so. Because I was having a little bit of trouble with my heat tool, especially on the back side here. So I gotta be careful I don't cut anything I don't wanna cut. Okay, there we go. So let's see how this heat tool is gonna work now. I could try to get a little closer so I don't have to burn quite as much. Okay, let's see how this is gonna work now. My heat tool over, it should still be hot. Oh yeah, that is a lot better, I think. It melts away like, melts like butter. <laughs> so maybe you can see, just melting that away, just so, so easily. So yeah, I think that's a definitely a thumbs up tip. Use no-show mesh rather than cut away if you're going to be using a tool like this to clean up your edges. Okay, I just came up with another quick tip. I think it works better if you leave a lot more of the nose show mesh around your object because watch this. I can just poke this right in here and really just run this right along there and check that out. See how that comes off? So I think even leaving a longer piece right here, watch even makes it easier. That is so cool. So again on the back, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to do it on my lap. Just go straight down there along that edge. Bingo, gone. Straight down there. Gone. Look how nice that leaves an edge. A little mess right here. I could cut off or melt off a little bit down here. So my next tip for you is to leave a bigger piece, like a quarter of an inch, because that gives you something to hold on to and it just makes it a lot easier. And by the way, if you're using a tool like this, one way that they recommend that you can clean the tip is just get a ball of aluminum foil and every so often just jab it down into the aluminum foil and it cleans it. Okay, that's much better. Now, see how black that is? If I had my aluminum foil, I thought I saved some. I did. I saved some in the box. So you just take it and jab it down in here and it kind of cleans some of that burnt stuff off the tip. On we go. I'll make another one to put on this side. Okay, I've done all of the panels I need so far. The first panel, one, two, three, four middle panels, and it's time to do the last panel. It will be done exactly the same way as the middle panels, except for that there'll be two places that it's going to have the blue coneflower color, and you're going to stop before that and insert your final piece so that it all gets sewn together. Okay, what's happening here is it's stitching on the one side of the panel and it's already done the left hand side. So it's just stitching those two. So what it is, is it's the final panel is being stitched in between the start panel and the middle panel. It's already done both sides to hold it into place and now it's going to continue on stitching that. And of course, I'm going to be very careful. You see, I have that pen ready so that when my machine's foot comes around, it's not gonna get caught underneath that part. Once it gets past there, I can let it go again all the way back by itself.
Okay, this is the final time I'll have to load my hoop. Again, with my no-show mesh, my I've already drawn the circle out because I'm doing the very final one, as you can see here, the circle, which goes in the center of this, okay? So I've already drawn out the placement circle, and I've put this uh, fabric on here and the batting, and now I'm going to stitch it down. And then after it does the zigzag stitch, of course, I'm going to go ahead and trim it. I don't think I waited for it to do the zigzag stitch. Oops. Now it's going to do the zigzag. Oh, well, that's okay. Okay. Next up is going to come the applique heart, and this is going to be the placement stitch for them. Okay, now I'm going to put my applique fabric on here and should I have it right side up and press go. As you can see, I'll have jump stitches to that's not a problem. The next stitching will be the zigzag so that I can cut around these hearts easily. Okay, now it's time to trim. And then after the trimming, it will do the satin stitches all around the hearts. And that according to my machine, it's going to take about eight minutes. So I'm just going to trim this, as you can see. Once it's trimmed, I'll start the satin stitches, and then I'll meet you back here. Okay, here's what the trimmed up piece looks like. Time for the satin stitch. I'm not sure if you can see this or not, but I see some white fabric around the outer edge of this stitching and I really don't like how that looks. Also I have some jump stitches to do. But as far as this white stitching or the white uh, fabric here, a tip I'm going to tell you about is sometimes you can use a marker and just go over that to kind of hide it. And you know permanent marker is best. But right now it's time for me to take this piece and put it on the back so that I can stitch this and then trim it. At this point, I've put spray adhesive on the outer parts of my placemat and placed that onto the inner part that is still connected to the hoop, the inner circle. I'm going to stitch the tack down stitch and make sure everything turns out okay. If it's good, then I'll do the very last step. Okay, the front looks pretty good. I am going to peek at the back.
and that looks good as well. So I'm just going to go for the last step. It's a long step. It's 10 minutes. Here we go. And I'll meet you back here to show you the final project. Thanks so much for joining me, everybody. Hey, if you like my videos, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. Also, check out my links down below. If you're in the market to buy something, I appreciate it when you use them. Until next time, grab your cup of coffee or tea or adult beverage and have some fun crafting. See y'all again soon. Bye-bye.